Hi, this is Michael from cpgore.com. I wanted to show you my latest widget, which is a YouTube widget for Adobe Captivate. Um, this widget allows you to use YouTube videos directly in your Captivate projects, um, which is a pretty good thing because you can actually leverage YouTube server power and bandwidth power uh, when, de when deploying uh, YouTube videos for your clients or end users, so to speak. Um, if you use progressive videos in your Captivate project, you will have to serve them from your own server, which means that it's your server that actually take the load of displaying the video and will have to stream the video or progressively download the video to all the clients. Um, by using a YouTube video, you will actually use YouTube's or the client that's watching the end product will use the YouTube server and network bandwidth to get the video. So it's a pretty good thing. Um, and now I'm going to show you how it works. So I just dragged or just inserted the widget on uh, on the stage here, and if we'll double click, we'll open up a very big properties panel. And um, you can basically customize just about anything you want with the player. So in in this area here, you'll have all the player bar, control bar options. You can change the colors, alpha values, uh, heights separation of buttons, scale of buttons, etc. Uh, you can choose to display only some of the controls uh, or display all of them. Over here you can select if you want to display controls at all. You can select if you want the controls to appear on top of the video, which, will, which they'll be now, or if you want them to appear below the video. So if you, if you want them to appear below the video, they'll kind of use up some of the player size. Um, like it's said now, the controls will be overlaid on the video, which is the way YouTube does it, and, and they'll automatically hide after a couple of seconds when the user hasn't moved his mouse. Um, we'll keep it this way. You can also select uh, if Captivate should automatically pause the slide playback once the video plays, um, and automatically resume playback when the video is completed. Up at the top area, we'll have the area to define the YouTube URL. You'll have uh, the width and height of the player. You can set the initial volume if you want it to be a bit lower than 100% for example. Um, you can decide whether or not it should autoplay, if it should show a preloader when it's kind of buffering the video. Uh, you can set the buffer time. The default is 3 seconds which will in most cases be quite enough. Um, if your client is on a very slow network, you could probably um, um, make it a bit larger, but 3 seconds will probably be okay for just about everyone. Um, and then there's the start quality, where you can select which kind of video uh, quality to serve to the client. Um, this, the best possible option, which is the default, this will actually let YouTube decide. Uh, so the widget uh, will communicate with YouTube and they will decide which quality would be the best one to serve to this particular computer viewing it. Um, so I would just keep it at that. Um, however, you can override it and select whatever you like. Uh, just make sure that particular quality is actually available in YouTube because if it's not, then the video playback will fail. We'll keep it on best possible right here. Alright, so what we'll need now is a YouTube URL. So I'll go to YouTube and I decided on using the Game of Thrones Season 3 trailer. Um, and we'll just copy the link and go back to the widget and paste it right in. One thing you gotta be uh, careful about is that it actually uses the HTTP link and not the HTTPS link. Uh, HTTPS is not supported with the widget or the YouTube API, so make sure it's an HTTP link. Alright, so one more thing we need to do is we need to set up the correct size for this video. So if we go back to the YouTube video, and we click the Share link here, and then click the Embed link, we'll get a, a selector up here with video sizes. Um, these are the sizes that YouTube recommends for this particular video in its size and aspect radio. So this will be the best you can use. So I'm going to select 853 by 480. So I'll put in those sizes here. 480. And now we're good to go. On the stage, the 
the widget itself is 350 wide by 200 pixels high. Uh, when the project is published, it will expand to the uh, player size that you defined in the properties. However, here on the stage, due to a limitation in capture rate, I, I cannot expand the, vid the widget beyond its, its uh, original size. So in order to place the widget properly uh, where you want it in your layout, you'll uh, need to insert a um, highlight box and then enter the size you used for the video, for the player size, and you'll just position that wherever you want to have that appear on the stage. We'll just this one we'll just put right bang on in the middle. Um, and what we'll do now is we'll move the widget so that it lines up exactly with the top left edge of this highlight box. There we go. So upon playback, upon playing a published pro project, the video YouTube widget will expand to fill out this entire area. So this is where your video will be. Uh, now we'll just delete the highlight box because we don't need it anymore. And all that's left now is to press F12 to preview the project and see if we'll be lucky. And there we go. Just turn down the volume a bit. So, as you can see, the, the YouTube video just placed the video directly in Captivate. The controls were auto-hiding, and if I move the mouse, they'll pop right up again. And you can pause it. Oh, if I can hit it, you can pause it. You can scrub. You can resume playback. You can mute and unmute the sound directly here. You can see, you can switch the quality if you want to do that. And as you notice here, the Capture It project is paused while the video is playing. So if we'll move ahead on the timeline and see what happens at the end of the video, Capture It project should resume playback, which it does. So this is the YouTube widget in a nutshell, um, and I hope you find it useful. Uh, I think it can uh, be a very powerful addition to uh, your Capture It courses. Thank you for listening.